Neurofibromatosis Type 2, Wikipedia Article Audio Neurofibromatosis Type 2 is a genetic condition which may be inherited or may arise spontaneously. The main manifestation of the condition is the development of symmetric, benign brain tumors in the region of the cranial nerve 8, which is the auditory vestibular nerve that transmits sensory information from the inner ear to the brain. Many people with this condition also experience visual problems. NF2 is caused by mutations of the Merlin gene, which seems to influence the form and movement of cells. The principal treatments consist of neurosurgical removal of the tumors and surgical treatment of the eye lesions. Historically the underlying disorder has not had any therapy due to the cell function caused by the genetic mutation. However, new drug research and some clinical trials have shown some promise in having beneficial effects. Collaborative research to find better treatments is ongoing such as the work of the Synodos NF2 Consortium of Scientists. Cause Pathogenesis Pathology Genotype-phenotype correlation Diagnosis Prenatal Postnatal Treatment Surgery Systemic medical treatment Hearing loss Prognosis NF2 is a microdeletion syndrome involving mutations in the NF2 gene located at 22q12.2 of chromosome 22. It is an inheritable disorder with an autosomal dominant mode of transmission. Incidence of the condition is about 1 in 60,000. There is a broad clinical spectrum known, but all patients checked have been found to have some mutation of the same gene on chromosome 22. Through statistics, it is suspected that one half of cases are inherited, and one half are the result of new, de novo mutations. NF2 is caused by a defect in the gene that normally gives rise to a product called Merlin or Schwannemann located on chromosome 22 band Q11-13.1. This peptide is thought to have a tumor suppressive function. In a normal cell, the concentrations of active Merlin are controlled by processes such as cell adhesion. It is known that Merlin's deficiency can result in unmediated progression through the cell cycle due to the lack of contact-mediated tumor suppression sufficient to result in the tumor's characteristic of neurofibromatosis type 2. Mutations of NF2 is presumed to result in either a failure to synthesize Merlin or the production of a defective peptide that lacks the normal tumor suppressive effect. The Schwannemann peptide consists of 595 amino acids. Comparison of Schwannemann with other proteins shows similarities to proteins that connect the cytoskeleton to the cell membrane. Mutations in the Schwannemann gene are thought to alter the movement and shape of affected cells with loss of contact inhibition. Ependymomas are tumors arising from the ependyma, an epithelium-like tissue of the central nervous system. In patients with NF2 and ependymomas, the tumor suppressant function of Merlin may be compromised. Loss of function mutations occurring in chromosome 22Q, where Merlin proteins are coded, can promote tumorigenesis, or the creation of new tumorous cells. Deletions, too, in the NH2 terminal domain of Merlin proteins have been associated with early tumor onset and poor prognosis in affected patients. The so-called acoustic neuroma of NF2 is in fact a schwannoma of the nervous vestibularis, or vestibular schwannoma. The misnomer of acoustic neuroma is still often used. The vestibular schwannomas grow slowly at the inner entrance of the internal auditory meatus. 
They derive from the nerve sheaths of the upper part of the nervous vestibularis in the region between the central and peripheral myelin within the area of the porus acousticus, 1 cm from the brain stem. Many people with NF2 were included in studies that were designed to compare disease type and progression with exact determination of the associated mutation. The goal of such comparisons of genotype and phenotype is to determine whether specific mutations cause respective combinations of symptoms. This would be extremely valuable for the prediction of disease progression and the planning of therapy starting at a young age. The results of such studies are the following. These results suggest that other factors will probably determine the clinical outcome. Bilateral vestibular schwannomas are diagnostic of NF2. Ferner ETAL give three sets of diagnostic criteria for NF2. Another set of diagnostic criteria is the following. The criteria have varied over time. Early diagnosis allows better planning of therapy in young patients with NF2. In many cases, the hearing loss is present for 10 years before the correct diagnosis is established. Early in the condition, surgery for an acoustic neurinema can protect facial nerve function in many patients. In selected cases of patients with very small tumors and good bilateral hearing, surgery may offer the possibility of long-term hearing preservation. Patients with the Wishard phenotype suffer multiple recurrences of the tumor after surgical treatment. In the case of facial nerve palsy, the muscles of the eyelids can lose their mobility, leading to conjunctivitis and corneal injury. Lid loading can help prevent these complications. Other means of preserving corneal health include tarsorophy, where the eyelids are partially sewn together to narrow the opening of the eye, or the use of punctal plugs, which block the duct that drains tears from the conjunctival sac. All these techniques conserve moisture from the lacrimal glands, which lubricates the cornea and prevents injury. Most patients with NF2 develop cataracts, which often require replacement of the lens. Children of affected parents should have a specialist examination every year to detect developing tumors. Learning of sign language is one means of preparation for those that will most probably suffer complete hearing loss. There are several different surgical techniques for the removal of acoustic neuroma. The choice of approach is determined by size of the tumor, hearing capability, and general clinical condition of the patient. Larger tumors can be treated by either the translabyrinthine approach or the retrosigmoid approach, depending upon the experience of the surgical team. With large tumors, the chance of hearing preservation is small with any approach. When hearing is already poor, the translabyrinthine approach may be used for even small tumors. Small, lateralized tumors in patients with good hearing should have the middle fossa approach. When the location of the tumor is more medial a retrosigmoid approach may be better. Auditory canal decompression is another surgical technique that can prolong usable hearing when a vestibular schwannoma has grown too large to remove without damage to the cochlear nerve. In the IAC decompression, a middle fossa approach is employed to expose the bony roof of the IAC without any attempt to remove the tumor. The bone overlying the acoustic nerve is removed allowing the tumor to expand upward into the middle cranial fossa. In this way, pressure on the cochlear nerve is relieved, reducing the risk of further hearing loss from direct compression or obstruction of vascular supply to the nerve. Radio surgery is a conservative alternative to cranial base or other intracranial surgery. With conformal radio surgical techniques, Therapeutic radiation focused on the tumor, sparing exposure to surrounding normal tissues. 
Although radio surgery can seldom completely destroy a tumor, it can often arrest its growth or reduce its size. While radiation is less immediately damaging than conventional surgery, it incurs a higher risk of subsequent malignant change in the irradiated tissues, and this risk is higher in NF2 than in sporadic lesions. A 2009 clinical trial at Massachusetts General Hospital used the cancer drug Bevacizumab to treat 10 patients with neurofibromatosis type 2. The result was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Of the 10 patients treated with Bevacizumab, tumors shrank in 9 of them, with the median best response rate of 26%. Hearing improved in some of the patients, but improvements were not strongly correlated with tumor shrinkage. Bevacizumab works by cutting the blood supply to the tumors and thus depriving them of their growth vector. Side effects during the study included alanine aminotransferase, proteinuria, and hypertension among others. A separate trial, published in the Neuro-Oncology Journal, show 40% tumor reduction in the two patients with NF2, along with significant hearing improvement. Overall the researchers believed that bevacizumab showed clinically significant effects on NF2 patients. However, more research is needed before the full effects of bevacizumab can be established in NF2 patients. Because hearing loss in those with NF2 almost always occurs after acquisition of verbal language skills, Patients do not always integrate well into the deaf culture and are more likely to resort to auditory assistive technology. The most sophisticated of these devices is the cochlear implant, which can sometimes restore a high level of auditory function even when natural hearing is totally lost. However, the amount of destruction to the cochlear nerve caused by the typical NF2 schwannoma often precludes the use of such an implant. In these cases, an auditory brainstem implant can restore a primitive level of hearing, which, when supplemented by lip reading, can restore a functional understanding of spoken language. The clinical spectrum of the condition is broad. In other words, People with NF2 may develop a wide range of distinct problems. Presenting symptoms of a lesion of the nervous vestibulocochlearis due to a tumor in the region of the cerebellopontine angle are the following, hearing loss, tinnitus, disequilibrium, headache, facial numbness, and weakness. Clinical signs of the lesion in discussion are, abnormal corneal reflex, nystagmus, facial hypesthesia. Evaluation shows the enlargement of the porous acousticus internus in the CT scan, enhancing tumors in the region of the cerebellopontine angle in gadolinium-enhanced MRI scans, hearing loss in audiometric studies and perhaps pathological findings in electronystagmography. Sometimes there are elevated levels of protein in liquor study. In NF2, acoustic neuromas usually affect young people, whereas in sporadic forms of acoustic neuromas, the appearance of the tumor is limited to the elderly. There are two forms of the NF2. In most cases the mutation in the NF2 gene causes shortened peptides, there are no mutational hot spots. Patients with frame shift mutations or nonsense mutations suffer poor prognosis, patients with missense mutations have a better prognosis, in cases with mutations in the splice acceptor region, there is no good correlation to determine, point mutations may have only minor effects, cases are published in which exactly the same mutation is associated with clearly different outcome. Detection of bilateral acoustic neuroma by imaging procedures, first degree relative with NF2 and the occurrence of neurofibroma, meningiomas, glioma, or schwannoma, 
first degree relative with NF2 and the occurrence of juvenile posterior subcapsular cataract. The retrosigmoid approach offers some opportunity for the retention of hearing, the translabyrinthine approach will sacrifice hearing on that side, but will usually spare the facial nerve. Postoperative cerebrospinal fluid leaks are more common, the middle fossa approach is preferred for small tumors, and offers the highest probability of retention of hearing and vestibular function. Less invasive endoscopic techniques have been done outside of the United States for some time. Recovery times are reported to be faster. However, this technique is not yet mainstream among surgeons in the U.S. The Wishart phenotype is characterized by multiple cerebral and spinal lesions in patients younger than 20 years and with rapid progression of the tumors. Patients that develop single central tumors with slow progression after age of 20 are thought to have the feeling Gardner phenotype. 